Hi, I'm Bill Kinney, and this is video number 24 in a series about complex arithmetic, focused recently on powers and roots of complex numbers and using Mathematica to do some neat things. In the last video, we made an animation down here that allowed us to visualize, in this case, it was the twelfth root, or the, the set of twelfth roots of any complex number, z, horizontal axis here being the real axis, the vertical axis being the imaginary axis, I have this cursor that I can move around and I can see how the twelfth roots of that number, wherever I, ha wherever I happen to be, move around in the complex plane and we see that they always form a regular polygon with twelve sides called a dodecagon. I'd like to start this video by adding one extra bit of interest to this animation. Let's add an extra animation parameter, m, say starting at 3 and going up to 12. That will allow us to, well, let's actually start it at 2, going up to 12 and incrementing up by 1. That will allow us to visualize not the 12th root, but instead an arbitrary mth root of our arbitrary complex number that is chosen by setting our cursor in the field of view. So I'm changing all these 12s to m. So that we can look at those mth roots. Not much longer here, just three more to go. Okay, there, m is two. We don't get a regular polygon because it's really, well, it's a degenerate one because we've only got one side to it. But once I make m3, then we have an equilateral triangle. When m is four, we have a square. When m is five, we have a pentagon. We can also continue moving the cursor around to see that our roots, in this case fifth roots, are always going to be a pentagon. I'm not sure, not, that's a little bit of Mathematica problems there on that one. I'm not sure what happened there. Doesn't look like this is always drawing it accurately, but uh, I'm not going to take the time to try to figure out what's wrong. Here we're looking at eighth roots, we get an octagon, etc. So that's kind of a neat thing about the geometry of roots. Next thing I want to do is I want to show you how you can take what we did here and write it in terms of a formula. If we have an arbitrary complex number z written in polar form as r times e to the i theta, how do we write its set of nth roots? Or, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and call them nth roots here. And again, this notation is reserved for the nth roots. In polar form, the modulus is going to be the non-negative nth root of the non-negative number r, which is the modulus of z. So this is a unique number, not a set of numbers. Looking at what the arguments can be here, we can write a general formula for them. Oops, let's put that up here. Where the coefficient of 2 pi is what changes, we'll call it k. And to get your distinct, your n distinct, k, your n distinct nth roots, start off with k equal to zero, then one, then two, then three, etc., and n with n minus one, and those will be the n distinct nth roots. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and color it. We can also use Euler's formula to write this in trigonometric form involving cosine and sine. So this would be another way to write it, the, uh, the set of n, nth roots. Let's also do a particular example here. Let me copy and paste this formula down here. Let's consider um, the complex number z equals negative 1 plus square root of 3i. What is its modulus, first of all? Think about it. You'd have to square negative 1 to get positive 1. Square the square root of 3 to get 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. The modulus of this complex number is going to be 2. And an argument, if we take the principal value of the argument, thinking about plotting this in the complex plane, you're going to be 
let's see, the angle is going to be 120 degrees, which in radians is going to be 2 pi over 3. And let's go ahead and find the set of fifth roots of z. According to this formula here, we're going to have to find the fifth root of 2, the, the non-negative fifth root of 2. So I replaced the n with 5, I replaced the r with 2. And that is what it is. It's, you know, we can approximate it, but let's just leave it as a symbol. That's going to be the um, argument of all the fifth roots of 2, excuse me, the modulus. And for sake of time, let's go ahead and write these in uh, exponential polar form. Uh, and you can convert it to rectangular polar form with cosine and sine if you, if you desire. So I'm going to write this as e to the i theta. Then I have to go up here and I have to copy and paste this in here. But let's go ahead and put what theta is in here. It's 2 pi over 3. And n is 5. And I'm looking at these numbers as k varies from 0 to 4. So the first value of k, 0, is going to make this go away. Actually, let's put this on the next line here. Okay. The next one, k is going to be 1, so we're going to get a 2 pi up here. The next one, k is going to be 2, so we'll get a 4 pi. Then k will be 3, so we'll get a 6 pi. And finally, the last one, k will be 4, so we'll get an 8 pi here. And then we can simplify this. 2 pi over 3 divided by 5 can be simplified to 2 pi over 15. 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, um, let's see, that'll be, maybe I should use Mathematica to help me do this quick here using capital PI for pi. That'll be two pi over, 8 pi over 3, but then I divide by 5 as well. So I'm going to get 8 pi over 15. And in fact, think about it, these coefficients of the pi in the numerator are just going to keep going up by 6 each time. So the next one is going to be 14 pi over 15, and then 20 pi over 15, yeah, going up by 6. And then 26 pi over 15. If we did the next one, it would be 32 pi over 15. And by subtracting 30 pi over 15 from that, which is 2 pi, we would get back to 2 pi over 15. 32 pi over 15 would give us the same, the same complex number as we have from this one. So this would represent all the fifth roots of this complex number. the set of fifth roots. So this, that's our particular example. Again, you could convert this into rectangular form if you so desired, though you would... looks like you probably have to approximate these cosine and sine values if you're going to get a good idea about where these numbers are. Now that's the end of this video.